Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. What's up, everybody? This is your co-host, Ashley Lunar Goddess, guerrilla girl filmmaker and horror-loving cinephile. I'm just your average podcast-producing badass. I'm John Thomas. Some would say that I go a little too far with my love of all things horror, paranormal, and meta, but I say... Talk nerdy to me, and I'm all yours. I'm BJ Sewura, an aspiring paranormal musician who plays live for the dead because the living just doesn't want to hear me. <laughs> the Dead of Winter Horror Network and they came from the 508 Productions invite you to endure the most terrifying immersive experience in all of podcasting beneath the red umbrella. Now available wherever you listen to podcasts. Beneath the red umbrella, when the snow falls, the killing season begins. What's up, ghouls, gals, and all of our meta pals out there? In today's episode, we'll be discussing Sacred Soul Alignment, the Akashic Record, and Indigo Children. Joining us and helping us through this journey is special returning guest, Jilly Maria. We're excited to have you back. Welcome back, Jilly. Thank you. Happy to be back. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yes, this is very exciting. And I love, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for how supportive and kind you always are. When I post on the Book of Faces about needing guests and about our podcast, Jilly is one of the first people to comment and respond like, guys, do it. I had such a great time. You will love it. And I'm like, oh. You are the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, it's part of how we grow podcasts, right? As we talk about how we have great situations and whatever. And I like to in this, be in a space of like, I've had the really horrible situations where I'm like, please don't publish this. Please don't publish this. Please don't publish this. And then I've had the ones with y'all where I'm like, I could talk for days. And, uh, you know, it's just, those are fun. It's so fun. It's, this is a fun podcast. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. I don't always know if I am, uh, and I'm sure all of us feel this way at some point, but I don't always know, like, am I, am I doing okay? Am I, is this okay? So when we have people, yeah. amazing people, especially like super awesome people like you that come on and they're like, I had a great time. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm not messing it up. <laughs> no, you know, what I think is too is it's so interesting how like this year, Every time I have been experienced a year and been like, oh, this is really interesting as far as like people's clairs opening up and people getting into awareness and whatever. And then we have a year like this where it's like multi-level with people. Mm -hmm. And I was hearing you talking before we were recording about people's being clairs being spotty. But I, it's, a, it's such a super important thing because I think we have this notion around how are clairs, and to be clear what that is, for anybody that might be new, your clairs are your intuition's ability to clearly come through, like the filter through which your intuition is going to show up. Because a lot of people here have heard of clairvoyance as an example, and have this notion that if I'm not getting like vivid 3D LED pictures, then I'm quote unquote doing it wrong. And I want to dispel that because as we heal, as we allow ourselves to be more authentic, as we show up as who we are with all of our goo and our stuff and our quirks and our whatevers, our clairs start showing up. And a lot of times it's like bubbling. Like I always compare it to, bubble, to boiling water. Like you get bubbles here and you get a bubble there and you get a bubble there before it gets to be a consistent bubble. And even then you get water that's just, there's no bubbles. And sometimes you're like, <gasps> and people are like, I want to live that way all the time. And so that takes a lot of trust. It involves a lot of experiences that make you go, uh, oh, crap. Like, was that real? I can tell you about the truck. I can tell you about the girl in the field. I can tell you about um, a very recent thing where I was at a stoplight and saw an apparition out of the corner of my eye, like, like someone walking past my car. Um, and I knew there was no one there. So I was like, had to call it forward and say, okay, whoever that was, you got five seconds before I clear you and cross you. Intuition is going to show up the way it's going to show up. And so your expectation that like, 
if you have someone famous that you know, or you have a friend who, for example, might be clairvoyant, and that's just because it's the most common one, you may not have clairvoyance. You might have clairsentience, for example, where you get a clear feeling. So you might be in a space where you get goose flesh, or like every hair on the back of your neck stands up when someone says something true, or someone... Um, you know, share something and you have a notion of like someone walking past you that's pregnant as a recent example among my friends. You hear someone say something and you get this Ooh, in the pit of your stomach. Like it's that's completely false for one of my friends. Like she will get her yes is like every hair in the back of her neck and her, you know, even you can watch her head. If you're like seeing her, you can see her hair go. <laughs> but her no is this like, like she's just been kicked in the pit of her stomach. And if you're around her, she a lot of times will actually come forward and be like, ooh, and you're like, what happened? She's like, nothing, I'm good. But that's her, like, that is blatantly false. And so I think it's important to know that because we're all a little different in how we develop our clairs and how we develop our intuition. And I think a lot of times people feel like they're doing it wrong as they're coming into it. And two... You can also be in a space where some people need to be in person for a thing to happen. And some people like me can look at pictures of houses or videos of things and get the whole picture. I've never, I guess, been able to put a rhyme or reason to mine. And I think that's probably been the most frustrating aspect within my journey personally. Uh, and I feel like BJ, oftentimes you're, you mirror me with that kind of stuff, but, uh, in, in your experiences, but for me, I tend to get, and I don't know how else to describe it other than it feels like a just super massive burst of energy that just pulsates and radiates out from the center of my chest. And there will be times where it's like, I feel that just all the time or like I walk into a building, a house, wherever, and it just happens. And I'm like, what in the world is that? What am I tapping into? Other times it can be very clear because I feel it moves separately. Like it's more towards my sternum and it feels like someone's pulling at me. And so I know that can be unsettling for people when I'm like, Ooh, someone's pulling at me. And they're like, what does that even mean? <laughs> and to me, it's just like, I feel like someone's got a, a, something tethered into my tummy and they're just slowly pulling at me. So there are sensations that I feel. And one, I feel like I've kind of identified what that means, what it is. But the other one, like when it comes to the radiating, radiating energy from my chest, I still, and this is, you know, decades and decades in, have no idea what that means. But I have noticed over the past year that has become almost like a hibernation within me. And then you, you heard us talking about that when you came on. But at this point now, I only feel it randomly and it will it will throw me off because I'm getting more and more used to not experiencing it. So when it does happen, I'm like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> what was that? Where was I driving? What was I doing? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, here's the thing. It quite honestly feel what I get in my body is that that's a download. And a lot of times when we get energetic downloads, we think of it like, you know, if you do a down, if you do an update on your laptop and it's like, do you want to update and shut down? Do you want to update and restart? Do you want to, you know, and you're like, okay, what am, are your phone updates? And you know, have like, I don't know about everyone else's phone, but like my phone will update randomly for me nowadays. And, um, it'll like throw games on there automatically or new apps for me that I'm like, I don't want this on my phone. And so a lot of times think that when we get a download, we think of it as like we're going to suddenly have something there. And I always tell people, like, it's the download versus the opening. So, like, there's some things when you, you get the update and it does the download, it outputs it, does the thing, it opens up the gift and it takes it out and puts it on your computer. And voila, you have a whole new system or updates or whatever. And there's zero effort on your part. And then there's sometimes when we get the piece of information and it hangs out in our body until we're ready to receive it or until we get further instructions and know what to do with it. So it, and the thing is too, is a lot of times we try to make intuitive stuff and energetic stuff. We try to overthink it and make it make sense as opposed to saying, okay, I got this feeling that I'm supposed to do this. So I'm going to yes or no, like do the thing 
or like if I'm in a space where, um, you know, I got this notion a couple weeks ago, as an example, driving to go a different route. And I know like five or six different ways to get home. So it's like not a big deal. I know them all well enough and whatever. It's broad daylight, yada, yada. And there's really no areas that I would drive in to get home that are like, ah, anyway. But I was got this notion like, hmm, I'm going to do this. So I went that way home. And I wondered why I had that notion. But I just thought, okay, there must be an accident or something. Yeah, there was. It was an accident. And traffic was backed up like three miles. So it was like, yeah, you did the right thing. So sometimes we get to the space of, again, like trying to make sense of things. And we will also go through periods in life where, like, if you got a lot of stress in real life going on, we can shut our clairs down. We can temporarily put them over here because we got so much goo going on that we don't have any place for it to land. Does that make sense? So, like, if we're so stressed out that we're in a space of, like, I have no idea. Like, there's a lot of things, like, as I do interviews and as I do podcasts and, and I, we talk about all these things, and I end up telling people, like, yeah, I can look back on my life and know that I've been intuitive since birth. I've been a medium since I was a little kid. But I grew up in a very Catholic family, and you didn't go there. Like, I, I wouldn't have words to do that. I mean, I was at one point, like, I was probably in my 20s or 30s before I told my grandma about the guy on the stairs at my at her house. And I had never said anything. I just was, everybody just thought I was scared to go upstairs. And I was, because, you know, if you see a six-foot dude in your house that doesn't <laughs> look like anybody in your family. <laughs> like, real life, not going there. Yeah. One thing that. Uh, kind of to go along with what Ashley was saying is that like I had just gotten back from Scotland about a week and a half ago and um, that was one thing I've been you know I, I haven't been the thing about these gifts and everything it, you kind of I mean you don't want to rush them they kind of come to you and when they're supposed to that kind of thing is what I've learned and I was kind of hoping that I would feel something over there right like that being around all these ancient things and just a new environment and these different kinds of ways of living and all of that, that I would feel something, um, unique or something that would pop out of me that would be like, Oh, this is maybe, maybe trigger something within me, <laughs> but it, it really didn't. And that was kind of, that was one thing I was kind of disappointed with. Um, I did only have one situation there and it was cool where I had a deja vu moment where I dreamt about something that had happened and I was there. And I had never been there before. So that was the one thing that when I was in Scotland that happened that I was like, oh, wow, I'm supposed to be here. But there wasn't anything that was like supernatural or there wasn't anything calling out to me being like, hey, you need to, you know, come here and talk to me or something, if that makes sense. And again, you know, that's it 100 percent. And that's something that I, I've been to New Orleans a couple of times and I've had different experiences every time I've been there. And you know, it's interesting because like we're getting into that time of year where everybody and their cousin wants to, you know, is like, I want to go to like a sanatorium with you, or I want to go to this, or I want to go to that with you because I wonder what we experience. And I end up telling people like what you think you're going to experience and what you see on the TV shows and whatever is not what happens in real life most of the time. And like when I get situations, I've been in rooms with people who've like watched me, like have filmed me. You know, I don't care. I'm like, you can film me. Just let me know if you're going to release it on socials or whatever. Just tell me. But I think part of the thing is, too, is that a lot of times we have expectations and we feel like, oh, gosh. And I have to tell you that every time that I have been like, you know, I'm just going to go have fun. I'm going to do a thing. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to have any expectations. I'm just going to go. Those are the times when it's been like, you, over here. <laughs> hey, you, do this. And I here's the thing, too, is, a lot of times, like the notion that you got, the deja vu notion, is like letting you know that in another timeline, another lifetime, you were there. And so sometimes, too, is, and I'll just give you a really quick example, is one of my girlfriends is incredibly intuitive, and she used to get really upset when she would go places and nothing would happen. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that would happen to her is that when she would get back and when she would be detoxing from her vacation, as she would call it, you know, getting the sleep regulated and getting the food back to American food and all the things, is she would go through like seven to 10 days of, without going into TMI, bathroom issues. And her bathroom issues would be such that if she had experienced the things while she was in country, wherever she was, she wouldn't have been able to travel. 
I mean, in real life, she would not have been able to experience the beauty and the places and all the things that she wanted to travel and, you know, see and do. And, you know, so one of the things that I invite you into the space of is you got what you needed in Scotland. And one of the things like, you know, as she was talking about is, you know, I, I have this expectation, like I, we want to replicate the situation so we can get more of the thing as opposed to what if we relax and trust ourselves? Because I've done it too, where I've been like, I want to go to Charleston and experience this, or I want to go through this and experience that. And every time that I just go, F it, it's what it is. And we're just going to go and we're going to let it unfold. Every single time I've done that, that's when the beauty shows up. And the thing is, too, is that, you know, is we pick up things as we go. And sometimes we feel like we're waiting for the supernatural thing to happen. And we, in reality, are there for a very human thing. And just to give you an example, a couple of years ago, I was having a day with my electronics and I got the blue screen of death. And then my phone decided it was going to randomly restart. And I had a crap ton of work to do. And I went, OK. Here, you universe, we're going to go get an iced coffee and call it good for an hour. And I went to Dunks and got my iced coffee. And as I'm waiting for my iced coffee, the guy behind the guy that's sitting there, one of the guys that's sitting in their, uh, their little cafe section starts having a seizure. And I run over to him and I put my hand between his head and the wall. And as he's falling, I'm like yelling, like, call 911, da da da, whatever, 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 making sure he's safe. The guy sitting like next to him that's like freaked out. I'm like, I need you to do this. I'm like, like yelling orders. They're like, okay, you know, what's going on? Is he breathing? I'm like, yes, he's okay. The seizure passed him. He's okay. And I said, he knows his name. He knows what day it is. He knows where he is. They're like, okay, we're on our way. And, you know, I just, you know, got the guy situated. Obviously, he's super embarrassed. He's drooling everywhere, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, you know, listen, you're okay. You didn't bash your head. I got you. You're good. You know, I was absolutely not. I mean, I was went to get my coffee, but I was also right place, right time, completely intuitively, because me, you know, prior to really getting into my intuition would have been like, oh, just wait for my laptop to restart and just be pissy as opposed to get out of the house, go where you're intuitively being called to go and let yourself be in the space of things unfolding. And that's one of the things I tell people, you want to develop your intuition, get out of your head about it, first of all. If you haven't started doing your work to get like the goo, the trauma, the stress, the where you're resenting people, et cetera, et cetera, out of the way, because your stuff isn't out there. There's no one to give it to you. It's within you that it gets to bubble up after you start taking all the trash out of the trash can. It's underneath there. And when we allow things to unfold and when we let ourselves be in our heart space, and be in a space of wonderment and gratitude for our gifts, that's when stuff starts to roll out. Yeah, you make a really good point. I mean, we're what, five seasons in now. And you know, the thing we're constantly being reminded of that apparently I'm not absorbing <laughs> is <laughs> that uh, what every practitioner comes on and talks about who are really in tune with their intuition and their gifts is that they are in a state of energetic connectivity. And so you saying, you know, these expectations are what's holding us up, that that's like absolutely because when we are focusing on an expectation, we are almost holding our breath waiting for that to happen. And if we're holding our breath, we are not flowing. And that energy is not moving. So holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> you make well, it's so often we do that, right? We get to the space of, yeah, we get to the, and here's the thing. Some people are really, really thorough learners. And I tell them like, don't beat yourself up if you need the lesson five, six, 10 times, as opposed to like, why do I keep choosing the same guy? I'm like, well, one or gal, I'm like one, because that piece of you that's keeping attracting people who you want to save or rescue or whatever, that wound's not healed yet. No big deal. It's just, oh, hey. I tried to walk on my ankle today and I need to do another week or two on crutches or, Oh, Hey, I took the bandaid off and it still has a little bit before I'm going to be comfortable putting it in air and exposing it to my, you know, my, uh, you know, my tendency to wobble. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is again, like you said, when we get in the space of expectation, I, I encourage people strongly to drop the expectation. 
because oftentimes when we get, I mean, I fell out, I always tell people, I'm so thankful when I started my journey that I was clueless and dumb, that I was so, I was so naive and I'm so thankful for it because I was not in the space where a lot of people are today when they start, when people start coming into like, they realize they have trauma, they realize they're not happy in their life and they start working through those pieces. A lot of times they see other people over there and they want to be just like that person as opposed to being their best selves because how I, there's a lot of psychics out there and a lot of people who are mediums and you know intuitives and whatever label they give themselves who get information however they get information and a lot of times people see like famous people and they go oh I want to be just like so and so and I'm like what if you were just you mm. because the reality is how I talk to dead people is different than you know, like someone that I follow and I have for years is like Colette Baron Reed, someone I follow and I have for many years and ton, ton of respect for her. She does mediumship readings, as does like Teresa Caputo, as does like John Gray, differently than I do because my clairs are different. And so when people get in the space of realizing that they're different and how your clairs show up, how your gifts show up is unique to you. Like, do you want to be your best Ashley or BJ or John or whoever else is listening to this? Or do you want to be your best, you know, do you want to be the best copy of someone else? And the reality is you want to be your best self and that's going to show up differently. And the thing is too, is as we grow, as we shift, like my clears have changed dramatically since the first time that I went, oh crap, and realized I was clear audience. My clear audience is still my strongest gift. But it used to be followed by clairvoyance. I am incredibly clairvoyant for clients, but not for myself. I am now very strong clairsentience. And so I will get goose flesh. I will get like shivers now. I will be in the space of like, <gasps> okay, what was that? And it's like, okay. But I do have clairvoyance when it comes to dead people. And it's like, I will see things peripherally, like even like the last six months, especially, there's been a lot of me seeing people. In my, and I'm like, and I see it, I like, and I don't get in the place of craziness anymore. I just go, okay, who or what was that? Why did I see them? Do I need to clear them? Get them out of my energy. Like, boom, done. Crossed over. Another example is going to St. John, USBI. Like, every time I go, I go just to, like, there's always a rune I want to visit. There's always something ancient that I want to see. Um, the islands have been inhabited since the 1600s. First by the Dutch who were terrible, terrible people to the enslaved people that were over there. But I never have been in a space where I've been like, oh, I want to go, blah, blah, blah. Never. I've always I've said, hey, I want to go do a recording here. I want to go do a healing here, but no expectation of anybody showing up, anything happening. And every single time that I've gone and been there, I open myself up energetically to the experience. And part of it is trusting yourself. And I always do this aloud is to say, I want to welcome anything that's love. Yeah. So, because a lot of times people are afraid to open up their clairs and they open up to their intuition because they're terrified of like demons or they see like, you know, they see these shows where it's like everybody went, ah, and everybody's running as opposed to being like, I went to the, and I, if I could tell you how many people have been, have said, oh, I went to this ghost tour, or I went to this sanatorium or I went to this whatever that was open for Halloween and got it. And nothing happened. And I'm so disappointed. And I'm like, well, something probably did happen because we're all energetic beings. But the fact of the matter is you're comparing it to a TV show that has all these, you know, things going on and all these production pieces and whatnot. And I'm not saying that there aren't, you know, as far as like, you know, ghost hunters and the different equipment that they can pick up the whispers and that we obviously we wouldn't otherwise hear. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But what I am saying is that if you're in a space where you are, for example, closed off energetically, so many people have so much trauma that they have not touched with someone else's 10 foot pole, never mind their own. If you have a ton of trauma and you have to stop and deal with that, you're not going to be open to letting your clairs come out and be, be born. You're not going to be in that space of like, I want to go and do a ghost tour and blah, 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 and experience somebody from the 1700s. It's not going to happen. Because part of the thing is, is you're not going to know how to deal with the repercussions and you have no idea how to integrate it. So even if you did encounter a dead person, 
You don't know how to cross them. You don't know how to communicate with them. You don't know what to do with your energy once you've left. And those are all pieces that people like don't know how to, people don't know how to clear themselves. They don't know how to like cleanse their energy. And I'm like, I would never go into some, if I know something haunted, if it if I know it has energy in it, um, I wouldn't go in it without bubbling myself up. It would never even occur to me to go into something. And I do that on a day. I cleanse and, and clear my energy and bubble myself up and have myself energetically protected on the daily because we are all energy. Also, because I live eight miles from a, from a military base, I can spit and hit a military base. And so there's a lot of energy there that is like very heavy. And it's not my job as an empath to take all that on, which is a whole nother conversation about being an empath and being intuitive at the same time and people taking care of their energy, which, you know, a lot of times we feel like, you know, that, that, and that affects our ability to be intuitive as well. All these things that people don't like, I just want to open up my clear. I just want to be intuitive. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Hold, hold on. You watched a two minute video on YouTube about being in your clairs or opening your, you, how to be intuitive in five steps. Not how any of that works. <laughs> Not how any of that works at all. So sorry to tell you that. Well, and you make a good point about being prepared, like, how to protect yourself going into a space and how to cleanse yourself leaving a space. I think oftentimes it is our energetic self protecting us by shutting down when we go into those situations because we don't know how to protect ourselves. So it's like, nope, you're not ready for this. So we're just closing it all down. <laughs> you're not going to tap into all of that right now. Yeah. And it's like with people with Ouija boards too, I'm like, I'm going to hold the seance. I'm like, okay, do you know what to do if you come across a wayward? A what? Do you know what to do if you come across an angry energy? Someone that is stuck in, someone stuck that, that's, stuck, that's stuck in the blender, if you will. <laughs> the frog in the blender. Do you know what to do in that situation? And most people will look at me and say, either they'll say, you're this, this, and this, and start throwing their fear at me, which, you know, I'm like, not taking that, bye-bye. Or they'll say, what do you mean? Well, we're just going to go and have fun. Yeah, I want to go to this place with a Ouija board. It's being responsible and, and not, you know, going out of your depth, right? Like, And I think a, a lot of people just do what they want because they, they're like, oh, it's fun. It, there's not going to be a consequence for this. Like, what's the worst could happen, right? Well, yeah, I don't think people realize what's at stake because they – it, a lot of it goes hand in hand with just not having the uh, education or awareness, but the idea that like, well, if it's not physical, then it's not really hurting me. Not realizing that, hey, your energetic body is probably more, you know, sacred. It, it is not even probably. It is more sacred and a longer lasting damage than anything physical could be. And so 100%. you want to protect that. <laughs> Well, a lot of people, it's funny because I had a conversation with somebody and this friend of mine, and it's like dating when I was in my twenties, like being, you know, making out with people and randomly being in situations with people that, you know, it's like, oh, well, you're only like kissing or you're only whatevering and blah, blah, blah. So it's not a big deal. I'm like everything's energy. And I'm like, in all honesty, if I had known what I know now in my twenties, I would probably still be a virgin if we're being real honest, because just because it's so important to protect your energy and people don't understand that if you're dealing with somebody who's like raw, it's like even going to a restaurant. If you're dealing with an angry chef and you're super energetically in tune, you're going to be like, and I'm like, I always Reiki my food. I run sacred soul alignments on my food anyway. So like my food is super protected and all the jazz before I even eat it. Um, but the point of fact is if you're in a space where like they're having like a crunchy night, in you're in, you know, you're even the slightest bit intuitive or empathic, you are going to feel that. And I've walked into restaurants where like they're having issues. And before someone even is like, yeah, our whole system is down. Our registers are down. We can't run credit cards. You know, we can't process orders the way we did. And everything is so like nowadays, everything is electronic. If you suddenly have to like whip out a pad of paper and write orders down, as opposed to like do, 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 on your little iPad, people are screwed. There's all this energetic stuff around it that we're like, oh, yeah, 
you know, we can just keep going. And I'm like, wait, wait, oh, oh, hold on a second. And then like when people are in relationships and I'm like, did you cleanse yourself after you got out of this relationship? Did you like take a shower intentionally? Did you like wash your clothes with the intention of rinsing all that person's energy off of it? Did you do a cord cutting? Did you run forgiveness? Did you do Ho'oponopono between you and the person? Did you completely energetically cut so that you're not taking all previous relationships into this one? And so many people are like, wait, what? Because it's like, oh, we broke up. I'm great. I'm like, with as much as my little tiny heart can muster, <clears throat> no, you're not. So do you want to, because it's because people will be in the space of, I can't meet anybody. I really, I'm a really great, you know, this person's a really great person. Like, well, did they cleanse themselves? Did you, did they do any of this? Did they, well, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, we need to find that out. Now, what is Ho'oponopono? Ho'oponopono is the Hawaiian forgiveness prayer. Ho'oponopono is about taking responsibility for everything that affects your state of being. It's the art of acceptance, forgiveness, cleansing of the energies that attract you into your life. I'm sorry when you say, when you say, I'm sorry, you are recognizing and accepting responsibility for the actions, thoughts, and emotions that have caused conflict to manifest into your reality. I had one question. Um, sure. And this is something that, like, obviously, I, you heard earlier that we were talking about my situation, but not to go deep into it, but as far as moving forward with things that you're sh struggling with, um, have you ever heard of people, like, being almost reminded or just kind of having their intuition show up in their dreams. Oh yeah. Cause that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happened quite a bit over the past few months. Um, like seeing like things that have, I've never seen before in dreams, things that have like one was coming head to head with an Eagle, like a bald Eagle. We were just rubbing heads together and it was weird. I was scared because like in the dream, it felt like it was real. Like this Eagle was mm -hmm. a, real bald eagle and just that fear but also that power that just and then just being that close it felt it was an overwhelming sensation um and then waking up from it just just trying to f you know never had that dream before what does that mean like it was amazing but it was also scary and i feel like stuff like that um for me personally and that's where my gifts and Ashley too. I mean, we, it's, it's a lot of those things w with dreams. That's kind of where I connect with my stuff. Yeah, no, hundred percent. A lot of people, a, a lot of people do. And a lot of too, because <clears throat> having a dream saying I had a dream about X, Y, Z is actually socially acceptable, right? As opposed to being in a space of like, I know, like, I know that you cannot go da 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 because you're going to get into a car accident and you're going to die. And people are like, how rude. As opposed to like, I had this dream and I think that it would be in your best interest to change your travel schedule because, you know, because we have dreams and it's like a lot of times I actually know a friend of mine who is gets dreams that are incredibly vivid and her um, ratio for accuracy is like 98%. Yeah. Like if she has a dream about things, she has, she will be so has reached out to me a couple of times and said, Hey, um, if you have a dream about such and such a thing and it's like, eh, do you share? And I said, well, you know, tell me what the thing is. And she'll tell me, I'm like, okay, this is how I would word it. <laughs> but yes, a lot of people get downloads. A lot of people get information. A lot of people have very, very, um, a lot of people have very vivid lucid dreams. And, um, when I'm healing from something real deep, I will have incredibly lucid dreams. And I learned a trick to break them, like to break myself out of it when I'm like, like the car accident dream or whatever. But the thing I love about your dream with the eagle is like, that is oh, like being in the space of like what eagles can do, how big they are. I'm, I'm slightly upset, might be slightly obsessed with bald eagles. Um, I, I watched the Southwest Florida Eagle cam and I found it a couple of years ago. And so I followed eagles from like, Oh my God, we have an egg. Oh my God. You know, they're doing <laughs> the thing to, Oh my God, they have a pip to, Oh my God, we raised an eagle. And like, you know, we have an eaglet and all the things. So I find the incredible power of bald eagles. I mean, I love, I've always thought they're majestic. I love the fact that they're, you know, the U S emblematic of the U S and freedom and the whole thing. Um, but realizing like how huge they are. Yes. Like those are some big birds and like realizing 
There's been a couple situations this year specifically with storms and whatever where eagles have gotten injured and whatever, and you like see them at the raptor centers, and the person that that like that is the veterinary person for them is holding them, and it's like this one guy is like to give you reference, John is six foot four, and this eagle is like covering his whole cheek, like he's got the talons and whatever, and he's like got his hands, and he does a separate shot of his whole hand, and you see the talons with his hands, and it's like holy crap. Remind me never like, oh, like, wow. Um, but I want to encourage you, you have dreams like that to write as much down as you possibly can, because a lot of times you'll stack to where you'll get the information in the initial dream. And then as you, and here's the thing too, is it's really important is when we write dreams down or when we validate something out loud, like, I just saw an apparition of this, or I just got the notion that this, if we say it out loud and we validate it and we're writing things down, it's like, oh, BJ's ready for more. Ashley's ready for more. Listener is ready for more. Like you got it, you heard it, you processed it correctly, then you integrate it. And, and a lot of times people are like, I'm like, don't try to integrate. Just be in the space of, okay, I need to like drink lots of water and maybe go for a walk, move my body. And integration. But I feel like you're going to get it. There's another piece. Like intuitive, my gut says there's another piece about the ego thing. Because you are, how far do you feel like you're in your gifts at this point? Beginning. I mean, a little, maybe a little past the beginning. Like I, I know they're there, but I'm not like, I can't control them. I can't. It's, it is like what we talked about. It's, it's hard to, you get frustrated because you're like, I go to Scotland. I, I want to feel these gifts over there and I don't see, I don't feel anything. And so it's, it's just, that's where I'm at. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I asked because I want to just encourage you into the space of writing it down. And, you know, I want it, whatever it honoring things looks like for you. Like I went through a phase, for example, where like every new moon, every full moon, I did like got <laughs> super ritualized and did the, you know, cleansing my crystals and the whole bit. And now I'm like, Oh, a full moon. Okay. And I will go out and look at it and I'll intuitively say, okay, what do I, what am I doing to honor this? And, you know, I used to get really upset if I could, if there was cloudy outside, or it was pouring rain or whatever. Um, there was a hurricane like two years ago during a full moon and I was all upset that there was a hurricane. I was like, I need to see the moon. It's like, okay, wait a minute. It's getting like four inches of rain. Who cares about the moon right now? Um, but point of fact is, is that again, when we allow ourselves to rely, oh, I know I have intuition. I know I have intuition. I know I have players. They're going to show up as they show up. Super curious about what this looks like and um, how it's going to show up. And again, I was so damn naive and I'm so glad I was because I wasn't like pushing or anything. I had no, like, I want to be like that person. Not even the remotest, like not even the slightest. And as I started coming into my gifts, everything was like, oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Like I'm stopped in traffic and I see this, this, um, aqua, this teal cab for this U S postal service truck, like wedged in the trees. Like it had just had an accident and I'm waiting patiently. I'm in traffic, um, on Southbound 95. So the next time I stopped, I get online, like we all do. And I Google, you know, when we like, Oh, uh, maybe not. We all do. I do it. So I was like, okay, you know, U S postal truck crash I 95. Let's see what comes up. And it had happened like two years prior. And I was like, oh, they never cleared the energy of it. Okay, cool. So no one knows. And again, a lot of people don't know. They're like, okay, we're going to clean up the crash, get the cars towed, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is, someone in that, in that crash had died. So when I was driving back up through South Carolina on 95, I just was like, clear it. Just clear everybody. Anybody that's passed away, just clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it as I'm driving. It's okay. That whoever that soul is that got stuck in that tree, like you got to move on. Do you think the reason that people who struggle with it in the waking world with their gifts and kind of coming to terms with the full manifestation of them, the reason that it manifests so strongly in the dreams is because when we're asleep, all of the stuff we put on when we're awake, our ego and every, you know, the trauma we remember is just stripped away so we're kind of almost at our purest self yes your subconscious is is playing when you're sleeping like you're in the space of relaxation you know that's why it's always like go to the bathroom and do all the things before you go to bed because your body's going to fully relax 
So it's allowing all the, the things that you wouldn't normally like. Or, and we also a lot of times process in our dreams. And a lot of times too is part of what's hard for a lot of people in the way, you know, in the waking world, as, as we say, is that there's so much dogma and there's so much societal stuff and there's so much like, you know, people saying, oh, that person's crazy or like we label things so heavily. I mean, like I grew up Catholic and it was this notion of like, you got your information from God, from the guy, the priest that was standing up. That was all powerful. And that was it. You know, there was, you know, priests, bishops, cardinals, the Pope. And that's how it all worked. And you didn't go outside and try to get information from anything else. And anybody that was doing anything else was the devil's work and all these pieces of information in part that in all honesty are meant to control us are meant to be like, no, no, you don't want to be like, you know, you don't want to have society, you know, punish you or ban you. And a lot of people, again, a lot of people that were alive and had prior lives in the, you know, 1600s to the 1800s, you know, where you got killed for having an apothecary, what we would call an apothecary nowadays. If you, you know, mashed berries and put them together and you just intuitively knew to mix quinine with whatever or to mix this thing with that thing to and you suddenly like were coming up with, you know, penicillin or some other thing that alleviated somebody's pain or like, hey, let me just take this little strip of cotton off my skirt and dip it in cocaine and put it on your tooth and all of a sudden, boom, you were like, what are you doing? Like if you were mixing things and intuitively knowing, like there's so many things I, and I know nothing about foraging. I have friends that do it and I want to learn, but it's not my gift by any stretch. But like, there's so many things that like berries and mushrooms and all these different pieces that you can pull together and make some incredible medicine. And back when, if you were like setting up, um, you know, if you were setting up grids, if you were putting rocks, you know, stacking rocks together, if you were, you know, praying to anything but God, if you were back when like women were doulas before we knew what a doula was, if a woman was a midwife, a lot, there was a lot of midwives that were killed because they knew more about the woman's body than the male doctors did. And they knew how to like work with cycles and all these things that it's like, well, when you stop and think about it, well, duh. I'm a woman, you're a woman. I kind of have a baseline that a man doesn't have. Like, that's just logic. But again, when we were in a space where society wants you to do it a certain way, there's a lot of people, I've had people tell me, to, tell me, I'm terrified of doing my healing work because I'm terrified of coming into my intuition. And what if I know something that I don't want to know? And I often tell people, you know, if you, my experience with myself and with hundreds of clients is, is when you have the aha moment, whether it's about logical things like relationships or jobs or whatever, or whether it's about like, hey, it's time for me to like admit the fact that I love tarot cards or, you know, picking up a crystal and getting, you know, an energy shock from it or, you know, having a conversation with someone and, and being Claudia, clear audience and hearing voices, as we call it, you know, those are things that typically will show up when you're ready. And not a moment before. And people try again, like you said, you know, people get in the space of getting super logical. And I have so many people that will say, well, this isn't, you know, this is not happening how it's supposed to happen. Okay. Yeah. But that's, it's your intuition, sweetheart. So however you have a notion, however YouTube to some random YouTube video tells you how it's supposed to happen, that that person didn't say, Hey, this is my experience. Your, my, yours might differ. Like the only place we say that is like diet ads. You know, this person lost 30 pounds in 10 days eating, you know, ASCV gummies. And, you know, your experience may, you know, vary. We don't say results are atypical. Yeah. Or, you know, you're going to come into your intuition at your rate, you know, because you have different trauma than I have. You have different experiences. If you happen to be like I knew somebody who was an Orthodox Jew and all these things that you just don't do as an Orthodox Jew. And she's a woman and her dad has been like, her dad's a rabbi and the whole nine yards. She can't just all of a sudden be like, in her mind, she couldn't just all of a sudden be like, I'm a highly intuitive and I'm a witch. In the Hasidic Jewish community, I know. And I said, okay, well then you got to figure out a way to, and I tell people, find a way to use the language code switch. And people will go, what do you mean? I'm like, well, 
if I'm having a conversation with somebody where like, it's like, I can come into like intuitive circles and talk about Claire's and talk about, you know, dead people and talk about different things in certain ways that it's like, yeah, we're vibing. And then it's like, if I go around people who are super religious, that person passed away and they're going to cross over at the, when they're ready. And you believe they go to purgatory. You believe they go to hell. I personally, my experience, I believe that there's no such thing as hell. I think hell is a, is a control mechanism. But again, I don't have to say that out loud in front of my mom's Catholic friends or in front of my friends that, you know, believe like, you know, Satan is going to come and, you know, put your house on fire if your kid's gay. I'm like, oh, Satan's not that bored. <laughs> but, but again, we have notions in our society and within our different religious or our community groups or our like thing that we believe in whether it's secular or otherwise and a lot of times those are things that's like what happens if you know when my husband met me 20 years ago I wasn't at all intuitive and now I'm super intuitive and I'm calling him I was crap left right and center and I'm saying hey are we going to stop and heal this or I'm refusing to dis like you know knowing someone who in real life is dating somebody who is very traumatized and he picks fights with her all the time. He doesn't realize he's doing it, but he's trying to get his anger out. So his way of doing it is to say things to her that insult her so that she gets her dukes up and now they're fighting and he's getting his anger out in a socially appropriate way, as opposed to my saying, let's do your work so that you don't have any wounds anymore or your wounds are greatly reduced. So you go, you're experiencing anger. Okay. I'm going to hold the space for that. That's a real life client where she's done enough for work now that, you know, her marriage went from being a, you know, she's dating this guy, they got married and nobody knew about it, which was a whole different story. But anyway, the point of fact is, is that she said, I'm going to hold the space for you because I don't want to be having you say things that you're going to have to regret and you can't roll your tongue back in your mouth. So I would much rather you be in the space of, you know, let's have the conversation and I'm going to hold the space for you to yell and scream and feel what you need to feel. And she's like, our relationship went from being like, we are two seconds from being done. And I want to just be on the other coast away from you, as far away from you, delete you, pretend you don't exist. So, you know what? I want this marriage to work and we're going to learn how to fight properly. And they are in like a seven or eight out of 10 marriage at this point. Because she's learned to heal her stuff. She is incredibly intuitive and has in fact saved multiple people from multiple car accidents because she's like, she, that's one of her weird gifts is that she's like, you need, she'll call people on the phone and be like, you need to do this right now and don't question me. And they're like, okay. And she's like, next right hand turn, take it. And one of her friends is like, you're out of your damn mind. And she's like, okay. So she turns right hand turn. If she had gone straight, the person who was behind her ended up getting T-boned oh. because someone went right through a red light and she heard it. She heard the crash and was like, what in the world was that? And it's like, someone just had an accident. Are you okay? And her friend called her back and goes, someone, someone just had an accident. Are you okay? And she goes, yeah, I'm fine. And she's like, so she went another way just so she could see the intersection. She's like, yeah, if I had been there, I would have gotten T-boned. She's like, I don't have to keep proving that I'm really good at this. <laughs> no, no, you don't. It's just creepy at this point. But I mean, creepy in the best possible, like, I love it kind of way. Well, now I feel badly for the person behind her. <laughs> I mean, yes, it, but the thing is, again, is it's like, and I always tell people, part of the thing too is, and that brings up another really good point. Part of the thing that we do when it comes to our intuition is we're trying to control things. Yep. We're trying to control how our experience, we're trying to control what we manifest. We're trying to like people all the time. And again, Charleston, Savannah, you know, Atlanta, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, you know, all these old places on the up and down the East coast of the U S that people that have, you know, all these ancient things. I mean, we go back to the 1600s here y'all and, you know, compared to Europe, that's nothing. But the point of fact is, is that a lot of people go, Oh, I'm going to go this with the expectation that I'm going to experience X. And I said, well, why don't you just go see what you experience? Yeah. Can you tell us what exactly the Indigo children are? Yes. So Indigo children is a, is a, um, are kids that are in their gifts that are in their knowing that are in their, um, and usually for most kids, it's, 
it's no, it's a, they're either clear cognizant, which is clear knowing, or they're clairvoyance, which is clear seeing. And indigo children are kids that are highly intuitive. A lot of times they end up in tag, what we used to call tag programs, um, you know, talented and gifted. I don't know what they call them nowadays, but um, point of fact is, is that they're kids that are highly intuitive. They are typically kids that will have experiences when they're babies where they see a deceased grandparent or they see a, they see someone that either has never been talked about or that they would have, that was not alive and alive in their life that they would have any way of knowing about. And, um, they will either see them or hear them or, um, one of my friends has a two year old. Well, she's like 10 now, but when she was a baby, when she was like two, she was a toddler. And she was doing this one day and they have video of her. They were, you know, just taking pictures of her or whatever. And she goes, grandpa, no, she's like, I don't want to hear that. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? And she's like, grandpa, he's in my ear. Now her grandpa had been gone for just over, like he was, he died. Her grandpa died. I want to say like a month, month and a half before she was born. So she never met him. And she, after that particular that first incident, had a whole bunch of other incidents. Like he would visit her at night and they have it on camera. They have his orb visiting her at night and her talking to him being like, no, grandpa, I'm fine. I love you and I miss you. I can't come with you. You know, and just being like, everybody's good. I love the dog. I love our new dog. Like she just like saying random stuff and there's no one in the room. And you just see this little orb dancing across the screen and it's like, and that, you know, of course there was a reach out to me like, oh my God, what, you know, I'm like, she, 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 she's just an indigo. She's okay. She's safe. Like, let's bubble the house. Let's, <laughs> but it's okay. It's, and that happened. Indigo children just happened. And a lot of times, you know, indigo kids tend to show up in families where there's a lot of trauma in my experience. And they tend to show up and make themselves known because kids are cute. Babies and toddlers are cute. And so when they're doing things that are, we just go, oh, isn't that cute? And then sometimes we're like, my friend, where it's like, <gasps> like, you know, you don't want to scare the children. It's like, y'all. So that's the short, short and dirty of what an indigo is. Um, and, uh, and I've told people that. I'm like, you have an indigo child. Now, why do you suppose they show up in families that have trauma? Like, what do you think that the purpose behind that is? In my experience, it's a soft landing for healing and intuition because we are all kind con- like I was saying earlier, you know, we have downloads. And a lot of times little kids, because they don't have filters, they don't start putting masks on, they don't have all those things. They're just pure energy. So kids are just like, you know, kids, yoga pants, and drunk people, three people who are the three things that tell the truth. And the reality of the situation is, is that children are unfiltered. So they can receive love and just be, you know, radiating love. Like if you turn on the light and you're ra- the light is radiating light, it's not going, oh, well, you know, this one doesn't like light or this one needs a dimmer. No. Now, what happens to these indigo children as they get older? Like, do we hear a lot about, I feel like the indigo children as children, but where are they as, you know, as adults? It all depends. Um, because here, and a lot of times as, as, as they grow, like as they come into adulthood, like 20s and beyond, a lot of times you find your footing again. It's like you have experiences where you're like undeniably like this happened or, and a lot of times they'll be drawn into spaces where you, like I was an indigo and I was raised in a very Catholic family. So my, like into my thirties and beyond finding like people who were like y'all, who are like, like-minded and you know, that you can have any kind of conversation with. There's definitely situations too, where kids will shut it down. Like if you grow in a, if you get in a space where, cause you know, the thing is it's cute. And I had one of my friends say to me recently, it's really cute till it's not. But people also have a lot more tolerance for cute in children than they do in adults. 
And it's like, you know, when you get into a relationship with somebody and it's brand new and the fact that they are the messiest person breathing is super cute when you first get to know them. And the fact that they think that they're LeBron James with their underwear and their socks is super cute until you're going to live together and marry them and do this for the next 20 years. And you're like, that's not cute anymore. We got to grow up. Or, you know, it's really cute that she, you know, you know, leaves her hair everywhere in the bathroom or does it is a really, you know, not a clean person or. Um, you know, she pops her bubble gum or she chomps when she eats or, you know, all these things that we find really cute when we're first, we're in the honeymoon phase and then real life hits and we're like, uh, but again, if a little kid's doing it and they're first learning how to chew food and they're like, ah, uh, <laughs> we're like, okay, first of all, close the mouth. We chew with our mouth closed. But again, it's cute when they're little and they're still learning as opposed to you're an adult, you should know better. It depends on who the parents are. Cause you have parents who are, um, you know, more open to things. Like I have a lot of friends who are parents who, um, are in their gifts and they're like, tell me more. And they encourage their kids to pull tarot cards. They encourage their kids to connect with their intuition. They teach their kids real young, how to connect with the Akashic records. They teach their kids how to do, you know, how to hold space and all those things where if you grow up in a family who is like Baptist or a family who it's really important what things look like, like blue bloods, where it's really important to put on a facade and we all have our white gloves and, you know, God forbid we wear white after Labor Day. And, you know, we always, the, the Christmas card is always really cute and we're in matching pajamas, those sorts of things. Those kids are more likely to like it gets shut down for a little bit. And then it starts to come up again. And I think the thing is, too, nowadays in 2024 and beyond, we are so much more open to some of these things that it's not like it was in the, you know, I was, you know, I was, a, I was a kid in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, being that was a whole different place and time of like, you were a whatever if you dared to do this. And it was like, oh, my God, that person pulls tarot cards. Oh, my God, that person's wearing a pentagram. Oh, my God. that And it was like all these things that we didn't really understand. And people were in the space of like you have religion and you have all the other people. And it was like, you know, and I mean, I grew up in that space where it was like there was even a hierarchy in Christianity. And I was like, I don't understand any of this. And then when I got to the space of like, I'm a spiritual Christian. But again, if you're in the space of nurturing it and being open to the conversations, I think we are much more nowadays than we ever have been before, where we're like, tell me more about that. And that's not validating it. It's just like, hey, I'm curious as to what you're seeing, hearing, knowing. But like a little two-year-old kid that comes to you and says, you know, I saw grandpa or I saw so-and-so or, you know, they bring something up that they have like their, you know, their, their clear cognizance you know, is right there. And they're like, two, they have no way of knowing. And in that case, you really can't ignore it. But again, it becomes a, the people that I know that have kids that started that young, they've always nurtured it. They've always been like, hmm, tell me more. And from a play standard, from a playful standard, as opposed to like, oh my God, nope, we're Baptists. We don't have those conversations. Like, no, we don't do that because, you know, we don't want to go to hell. And it's like, can we stop? Can we please stop? You know, but I, I'm the kind of person where I always, with anything, I like to be like, tell me more. And I love to encourage little kids to be in that space of, you know, teaching them, like my nieces and nephews, teaching them about, you know, crystals and whatnot and buying them, you know, selenite, whatever. And like, if they think it's stupid, throw it in a drawer. I'm like, it's, my mom was like, are you going to program that? I said, oh, of course. Do you know me? Like, yes, I'm going to program all of it. What you open yourself up to is a separate conversation. So it's like, it's there. If you want to open up the box and see what's in it, more power to you. If you just want to go, oh, hey, something came from Amazon. I have no idea. I didn't order it. <laughs> yeah, I think normalizing the conversation is key. It's just normalizing it so that no matter who or what feels like they are in a space where, one, you're not crazy. Two, it's okay to talk about it. And three, I feel like that does establish a vibration that is going to help in the long run versus creating a fear-based association with that. It's helping empower people to have a neutral or positive vibration when encountering those kind of energetic scenarios. 100%. 100%. And I think that that's a very, that's a very, very good point. 
is if we can start from the space of curiosity versus the space of like, oh my God. Um, you know, and the thing is too, is being in a space of like, for me, a lot of people that I know and like my parents, you know, like talking to them that coming out to them, if you will, you know, and saying, you know, Hey, I'm in my intuition and I, you know, I'm, I, I'm an Akashic Records practitioner. I'm a Reiki master. And, you know, just sharing with them, like, Hey, I do this. I talk to dead people. And, and, you know, them seeing like what I do, I'm like my mom watching me work and my mom seeing, you know, listening to other people's experiences with me. You know, I, she's a believer, you know, she sees what I do and she, you know, my dad has zero interest. My dad's like, Oh, okay. And just, Nope. Don't want any part of that. We're good over here. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think that that's, you know, allowing people to have their individual experiences too is super important to be in the space of like, you know, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. I'm not going to bamboozle you about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Holy moly. This time is flown, guys. I just looked at the clock. Uh, this has been a great conversation and I'm loving just how many lessons, at least for me, are connecting. Like everything you've brought up has really, I don't know. It's been interesting because some of the stuff you say, I'm like, holy cow, that is stuff that I have myself said to people in a different arena, whether it's like, fitness and aerial arts where it's like, Hey, don't compare yourselves. What's strong in someone else's body is going to look completely different in you embrace your own beauty and your own strengths. And so of course that would make sense applying that to gifts and energy and that realm. And so it's a nice reminder that, you know, life lessons can be applied across the board. It doesn't just stick to one discipline or one modality or one aspect of life. Not, not at all. It, it absolutely, it absolutely applies, applies across the board. And I, you know, one of the things I like to do is a cheat, tell people I'm like, you know, one of the ways you can develop your intuition is asking for signs, is getting real blunt and saying, hey, if I'm supposed to do this, show me, and I always use the thing, you know, th I'm like, show me three key SUVs in 24 hours. Or show me, you know, three cardinals or show me whatever it is that you want to see to know for sure that that's a yes. And also developing your body, yes, and your body, no. And, te you know, like teaching people, because I, I mean, I think nowadays, especially with AI and all the other things that we have, that there's so much like stuff that you're supposed to like, do you believe this? Is this real? And I tell people, I'm like, it's imperative that you know your true north, that you know your yes. And I, the easiest way to tell people is, is, you know, stand up and a, a quick exercise you can do is stand up and, you know, feet shoulder width apart and ask yourself, show me, ask your body to show you yes. For most people, you're going to lean forward and then show me no. And most people are going to lean backwards and then show me maybe. Now, some people are going to side, some people are just going to stay still. Some people are going to, you know, shift a little side to side, like they might be in like in a little wobble circle and then asking yourself, like either making statements or asking questions. And I always do it in threes um, that you know, to be true and you know, to be false and knowing where your body, you feel that. So I like saying, I'm a woman, where do I feel that in my body? And then saying like, I'm a man. And for me, it's like not in my body at all. Like if I make a false statement, it's not even in my body and playing with that. So that when somebody says something to you and you get that, like they're telling me the truth. Does that make sense? Because it because you can use it everywhere. So you can be in the sp space of saying, you know, and it helps to be an empath as well. But for me to be in the space of, you know, knowing that my body will just react completely spontaneously. And I'm like, oh, OK, that person's telling the truth, even if I don't like it. Because a lot of times we try to make things false because we don't like it or we don't want to hear it as opposed to like, am I a woman? you know, do I live in North Carolina? Do I have cats? Yes, yes, and yes. So I know where that is in my body versus saying I'm a man, I'm six or four, I'm whatever. Like, no, no, and no. <laughs> so developing that is a really good way to hack into your intuition. That's an awesome development tool. So I'm definitely going to give that a try. <laughs> it's a good hack. It's, it's a good hack to have. Yeah, definitely. Jilly, I appreciate you coming on and talking to us. I am with you. Like we should have many more conversations and not save it for another, you know, year or two. Uh, we would love to have you back on. <laughs> Whenever you want. 
to talk more and more and more. And um, I I really appreciate you coming on. Do you guys do and does anyone? I gotta get out of the habit of saying do you guys. That's a southern in me. <laughs> it's a tell sign. People are like you're from the south, aren't you? Uh, does anyone have any final thoughts before we wrap this amazing episode up? I just for me. Um just listening to all the things that you were saying, it really connected in a lot of ways and made me feel a little bit better about my experience in um, Scotland specifically. And there's more that I didn't share um, that we may have to wait for another episode or something, but um, it it was kind of the story you talked about with the the seizure and and stuff and that uh, something like that did happen over there as well, where I was randomly there. So, um, but yeah, I, I love, I love the idea that, you know, your intuition, like, obviously you can, you don't rush it. You just let it come to you and it's, it's okay. Like, it's okay if you're not connecting to it necessarily like all the time. Yeah. And yeah. And I think that that's one of the biggest lessons I took from this and yeah, just, just be, be open and don't have expectations. Yeah, no, Absolutely. John Thomas. Yeah, I just uh, I want to agree that with BJ, like definitely learned a lot, like always. Um, I know with my body, I can always tell when somebody's telling the truth because I do get the goosebumps. The hairs stand up. I'm like, oh, yep, that's exactly right. Um, Now I know how to try to get myself to learn the no response or, you know, the false response because I never really felt that or figured that out myself. So uh gonna try that and figure that one out um but yeah a lot of what you said kind of hit home um tonight so i'm gonna use that moving forward with a lot of things so yeah thank you awesome 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 awesome. you're welcome so julie where can people find more about you and are you open to people reaching out to you to talk more about this uh i'm 100 percent open to that they can either they can email me at julie maria at julie maria.com um, they can find me at JillianMaria.com. That's my website. So J I L L I E M A R I A.com. And I also have a baby podcast. Um, I love you. We're with Jillian Maria. So wherever you find podcasts it is up and, um, I've done a bunch of episodes and I've also done a bunch of mini, what I call mini pods, which are kind of monologues, but they're like little lessons. Um, so, you know, easily digestible little bits. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find me. And I would love to chat all things, um, all the things. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, John Thomas, you want to bring us home? I uh, sure do. All right. Thank you again, Jilly, for coming on again. Amazing You're welcome. time. Always love having you on. Can't wait to have you on again. And thank you for our listeners for listening to this episode of 300 podcast with your host. I'm John Thomas. I am Ashley Lunar Goddess. And I'm BJ Segura. And if you have any questions, comments, or episode suggestions, please feel free to email us at 300podcast at gmail.com. And if you haven't done so already, please like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. You don't want to miss amazing guests like Miss Jilly here. And please check out our website at 300podcast.com to check out all of our merch and all of the other things that we have on there. And you can find our episodes there and on all major podcasting streaming networks until next time.